Chao Tianyan was born dead for a single second before he came to life. Since birth, he's had the special power to look one second into the future. After his mother's death, his father raises him until he's five years old without knowing about his unique ability. One day, the father and son are watching TV when Tin Yan efficiently predicts the lottery ticket numbers a second before they're announced. Mr. Chow is shocked at the revelation and plans to use Tin Yan to make some money. He takes the kid to a local gambling station and asks him to predict the results. However, since Tin Yan can only see one second ahead, they fail to bet in time and lose all the money. Somehow, the word about the kid's ability spreads around town and he's called to a TV show. The announcer tests him by pulling a random card out of the deck and making him predict what it is. He answers all of them correctly and surprises everyone. Tin Yan becomes a nationwide sensation overnight. Some people believe he's a fraud, while others think he's being exploited by his father. When scientists look into the matter, they find no reasonable explanation for Tin Yan's condition. At last, they predict his reflexes are faster than a normal person and dismiss the conversation to hide their impotence. Tin Yan first knew he could see the future when he saw an accident take place before it actually happened. Initially, the concept was difficult for him to grasp, but he soon became used to it. Now, he takes a long breath and focuses on an object to see its future. When asked what he wants to do with his power, he claims that although most people think it's useless, he wants to use his powers to help people when he grows up. The announcers praise his ambition and so does the entire nation. 30 years later, Tin Yan has grown up to be a waiter at a restaurant. His ambition to use his power for good has vanished by now. Currently, he sometimes showcases his abilities to amuse the customers for money. He is a single parent to a son named Chi Lung. The kid has hearing difficulty and needs a hearing aid to listen. He's also very smart and gets good grades in school. For his surgery, Tin Yan has borrowed some money from a group of local thugs. They barge into the restaurant to ask him to return the cash. The group is furious because he hasn't been picking up their calls and has not paid the interest for an entire month. Tin Yan sees the future and figures out that they're about to hurt his son. He doesn't give them a chance to do so by making the first attack. As he fights them, a boxing fanatic, Yip Chi Shun, watches from nearby. He is impressed by Tin Yan's reflexes, which don't allow him to get hit even while going against two men. In the following scene, the witnesses and the thugs are taken to a police station and interrogated about the incident. After the commotion, Chi Shun approaches Tin Yan and inquires if he has been trained in martial arts. Even though Tin Yan shows no interest in talking to him, Chi Shun asks him to help him train for an upcoming boxing match. Tin Yan ignores him and walks away with his son while Chi Shun forcefully hands him his gym business card. When Tin Yan returns to the restaurant, its owner kicks him out for causing trouble. Because he had been working there for more than 20 years, the old man pays off his debts but asks him to never return again. Later, he is smoking in agony when he notices a crumpled business card on the floor. The next morning, he goes to the gym and meets Chi Shun again. The man claims that he's training to win against Hong Kong boxing champion, Joe, and wants Tin Yan's help in doing so. Tin Yan is ready to do anything for a little bit of money. He agrees to join Chi Shun to train from the next day. In the following scene, we see the star boxer, Joe, attending his opponent's funeral. Because of a slight mistake that the referee made, Joe accidentally killed the man in the ring. He pays his respects to the shrine while the family mourns behind him. The next morning, Tin Yan is four hours late to the gym. The training starts, but the guy is so out of shape that he can hardly keep up with the exercises. He also takes 10 breaks in an hour and refuses to get up when knocked out. Meanwhile, his son, Chi Lung, finds out where he is and comes to the gym looking for him. Chi Shun's business associate and friend, Yu, receives him at the door and brings him in. To seem cool in front of the kid, Tin Yan fights and trains harder than before. Chi Shun notices the change and pretends to get beaten up to help him impress his son. Later that day, they go to a local ring to fight officially. Chi Shun goes against a stronger opponent and gets beaten up in the first round. It turns out that he has asthma that is triggered every time he's in the ring. Because of this, he's been told that he can never become a boxer, although boxing is his passion. 
Chi Shun's late father was also a great boxer. However, in his last match, he lost his vision and punched the referee accidentally. Chi Shun got his first asthma attack while watching the same match. Now that he cannot fight, Tin Yan takes his place. Initially, the opponent showers him with several attacks and seems to be winning, but Tin Yan waits for the right second and lands a powerful blow that sends the opponent to the ground. The match ends because of a timeout. After that, the group returns home disheartened because Chi Shun has been told to never get on the ring again. They go to the old man's restaurant, where Tin Yan tells them about his powers for the first time. Chi Shun thinks it will be of great use to him if he decides to continue fighting. He offers him a raise and begs him to keep training at the gym. Tin Yan takes the offer and starts an even stricter training starting the next day. Somewhere else, an international boxer named Young is also preparing to fight Joe. His agency focuses more on the clickbait titles and sponsors rather than the match itself. They think that since Young has nothing special about him, the match between him and Joe won't collect much revenue. Enraged, Young trains even harder to prove himself to them. In the meantime, Tin Yan starts taking boxing seriously. He practices day and night with Chi Shun. With Chi Shun's father's techniques and his unique power, he becomes unbeatable in no time. Soon, he starts to play in the official tournaments and surprises everyone with his abilities. He doesn't lose even a single match in the first round of the tournament and establishes himself as a known name in the boxing community. Little Chi Lung cheers for his father in all of his matches. For the first time in his life, he sees Tin Yan as a brave man. Chi Shun and Tin Yan become best friends, while Tin Yan also develops a friendship with Yu. She asks Chi Lung about his mother and finds out that she left Tin Yan and the kid for another guy. With every win Tin Yan makes, more members join the gym. He also earns a lot of money and pays the restaurant owner back for the debt he was in. For the semi-final round of the tournament, Tin Yan goes against Yung. After two rounds, Yung is in a bad condition. He hasn't landed a single blow on Tin Yan, while Tin Yan has beaten him to the ground. The commentators are not surprised because Tin Yan has won every game in the tournament in a similar fashion. Using his power to see the future, he knocks Yung out in no time. The news about Tin Yan's special ability has spread in the media. He and Chi Shun are called to a reality television show, where Tin Yan explains all about his power. A professional who has done extensive research on Tin Yan has also been called to the show. He reveals that a normal person only has a single brain wave line, but Tin Yan's brain shows two of those. He can be considered a medical miracle, something that science has never known till now. Jung and his team take advantage of the revelation and claim that the fight wasn't fair, since Tin Yan had an advantage. The chairman of the association is still not convinced of Tin Yan's abilities, but Jung's team twists the rules to make it seem like he cheated. The association collective decides to revoke Tin Yan's qualification to the finals. He and Chi Shun try to retaliate that he fought using what he was born with, which cannot be considered cheating. However, they're powerless against Jung and his team of lawyers. Outside, the chairman approaches Tin Yan and asks him to predict what he's written on a piece of paper. Tin Yan does it with no effort. An impressed chairman thinks that a fight between Zhou and Tin Yan would be more interesting and profitable. Hence, he allows Tin Yan's entrance to the finals. The following day, a press conference is held with both Zhou and Tin Yan. Things get pretty heated when Zhou subtly taunts Tin Yan, and he does the same. Later at night, Tin Yan and Yu are by a river. They talk about their goals and future. Yu slowly starts to fall for him. On their way home, Tin Yan and Chi Lung encounter Yung, who's mad at Tin Yan for taking his place in the tournament. He gets into an altercation, which ends when Tin Yan and Chi Lung are pushed in front of a vehicle. The next day, Tin Yan wakes up in the hospital. He's safe and sound, but his son goes into a coma. The doctor also reveals that his brain is normal, which might mean his power has vanished. The matter is concerning, but Chi Shun suggests he should think about his son's well-being for now. The three take great care of the kid and never leave him alone even for a minute. Tin Yan reads him books, talks to him, and prays every day for him to get better. One night, Jung arrives at the hospital and asks Tin Yan to return to the ring even though he lost his powers. 
Martin Yan, on the other hand, punches him for being the reason his son is bedridden. When he wakes up at midnight, Tin Yan sees Chi Lung sitting up on the bed. He hugs the kid in joy, relieved that he finally woke up. Now that his son is fine, Tin Yan focuses on training harder than ever. Without his powers, he has to be taught all the defensive techniques from the top. But Chi Shun doesn't hold back in doing so. Finally, the day of the match arrives. The players will be going against each other in a 10-round bout of three minutes each. The announcers introduce Tin Yan as the one-second wonder who has started boxing only six months ago, but hasn't lost a single match in the tournament. Then there is Joe, who killed the last opponent he fought against and is willing to do the same again. The match starts, and initially, both fighters seem to be matching in skills. But then, Joe takes over and knocks Tin Yan down with a blow. He gets back up and tries to attack a second time, but is punched to the ground yet again. This time, Chi Shun comes to him and asks him to remember what he trained for. Tin Yan gets a look at his son's face in the audience and gets up with renewed motivation. The change is noticeable in the way he fights. Then suddenly, Joe is knocked down. The audience and the judges are shocked because no opponent has ever made Joe knock down in the tournament. They assume that since his ribs were injured in the last fight, a blow to the same area made him weak. The match continues and Joe takes revenge for the last punch with a right hook that lands in Tin Yan's eyes. The referee makes sure that he can see and gets him back in the match. Several rounds pass by as the rivals fight with great enthusiasm. Around the last round, Tin Yan loses consciousness for a few seconds. The referee starts the countdown as the crowd yells at him to get up. With all his might, Tin Yan gets up again and impresses everyone with his will. The two throw punches at each other but have to stop when the three minutes of the final round are over. Tin Yan almost passes out, but Joe holds him up, showcasing his sportsmanship. In the last scene, Chi Lung tells his father that he's proud of him. The results of the match are inaudible in the background as the father and son make their way out of the arena. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.